We're going to begin this Friday morning with the escalating tensions in the Middle East and the growing threat of an Iranian retaliatory attack against Israel that could come at any time. The commander of the U.S. Army's Central Command is in Israel today for a high-level meeting with the head of the Israeli military. The United States has repeatedly signaled it will steadfastly support Israel in the event of an attack. We continue to be concerned about the risk of escalation in the Middle East. We stand in strong support of Israel's security against these threats. Escalation is not in Iran's interest, it's not in the region's interest, and it's not in the world's interest. Iran's supreme leader said on Wednesday that Israel, quote, must be punished for a strike on the Iranian embassy in Syria earlier this month. It's widely believed the strike was carried out by Israel. Iran said the attack killed seven of its military advisors, including a top commander. And there are new reports this morning that suggest Iran is preparing to attack Israel within the coming days. We're going to begin in London this morning with Abi Kugathas and, and the latest details we have. Have. What more do we know, Abby, at this point about the preparations for a wider regional conflict and I would imagine efforts to try to ensure that does not happen? Heather, the Wall Street Journal now reporting there could be an attack in the next 24 to 48 hours, and we are seeing quite a bit of movement around those reports, of course, as you say, to de-escalate and prevent that from happening. Foreign ministers like Germany's Annalena Baerbock and Britain's David Cameron have already called up their Iranian counterpart, urging maximum restraint. The White House has reportedly been in contact with Arab partners like Saudi Arabia, hoping they can help defuse the situation. And the U.S is now also restricting travel for all embassy and consulate staff inside Israel. Most analysts say Iran feels it must respond in some way to reestablish its own deterrence following that fatal strike on its embassy building in Damascus. Tehran feeling like it must act or it gives Netanyahu an invitation uh, to keep going. Now, of course, the big question, what will that retaliation look like? And the bigger question, where could Iran potentially strike? The man that makes that decision is Ayatollah Khomeini, Iran's super Supreme leader. Most analysts say it is very unlikely that Iran will directly attack Israeli territory, but that there could be an assault potentially on occupied territories where Israeli personnel are, or Israeli diplomatic facilities around the world, or an attack on Israeli commercial interests. Something to show we have responded without escalating the conflict further. Another aspect that analysts are considering right now, that Netanyahu is potentially looking to deflect attention from Gaza by highlighting the conflict with Iran, because on that front, he and Biden, Heather, are exactly on the same page. Abby, we've talked often particularly earlier in the war about Han Yunus, the United Nations has now assessed the level of destruction there. Israel's forces recently withdrew. Palestinians have begun returning to the area. So as we look at these images, what is the UN now saying about what is left of Han Yunus? Yeah, a U.N. team on the ground says widespread destruction. It says buildings are damaged. It calls paved roads being turned into dirt roads. Uh, they say they also found unexploded 1,000-pound bombs just sitting on the street or inside schools. Of course, this is a major risk to civilians as people start coming back for whatever belongings they can find. And the lack of aid and ongoing worry. Samantha Power, the head of U.S. aid, says that famine is now underway. She's the first senior American official to say this publicly, adding that this is a dire situation as she's ever seen in her entire career. And she also says, quote, they must press our Israeli partners to actually follow through with the commitments they have made with regard to aid deliveries. Israel, of course, as we know, under immense international pressure to allow that aid into Gaza. It now says it's building a new aid crossing in the north. Critics say it's not about building more, but allowing more through the routes that already exist. And we are hearing some disparities in the reports, Heather, on what has been delivered. Israel said on Monday, Monday, that 419 trucks were permitted into Gaza, but the UN says it was 223. As we all know, we talk about this often, before the war, it was 500 trucks a day. Now, of course, the need, I should say, is much, much higher. Abby, thank you very much.